Science tells us that the universe is constantly expanding. Well, we're not sure whether that's a good thing or not, we're happy that it at least serves as an inspiration for the cosmos we actually care for. Needless to say, we're talking about the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Since the first Iron Man film in 2008, the franchise to rule all franchises has kept expanding over the course of four different phases. And it has gone on to include nearly every single one of our favorite comic book characters. Well, except for Mad Jim Jaspers. Poor Jim. Looks like those cool suits aren't worth adapting to the big screen. Anyway, the Marvel train keeps chugging on and there's good news for fans of the multimedia empire. Within the next half year or so, we'll be able to see two more installments of Phase 4. First up, the Spider-Man era led by Tom Holland will become a trilogy after the release of Spider-Man No Way Home. Less than six months later, Marvel Studios will bring back original Spider-Man director Sam Raimi, who will be at the helm of the sequel to Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. Let's hope that doesn't mean Doctor Strange goes through an emo phase. But whatsoever, there's room in the multiverse for all kinds of doctors. Those two upcoming releases will have something in common beyond the already classic Marvel logo. They will both feature thespian extraordinaire Benedict Cumberbatch as Doctor Strange, and we couldn't be happier about it. Since gaining worldwide recognition for his award-winning Sherlock Holmes part in BBC's Sherlock series, Cumberbatch has been one of our favorite actors. He has always managed to deliver outstanding performances, whether as a soldier, a spy, a genius like Alan Turing or Stephen Hawking, or even like all, his memorable cameo in Zoolander 2. But there's still a lot to find out about the Hammersmith London turned into one of the hottest Hollywood actors right now. While you wait for Doctor Strange to return, sit back, relax, and keep watching to find out five things you probably didn't know about Benedict Cumberbatch. While you're at it, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel to show your support. Also, remember to hit the bell icon too, and you'll get a notification every time we have something new for you. We are always updating Fact Factory with the most recent news and fun facts on favorite films and TV stars, so you'll be glad you did. Number 5. Like David Bowie, he has heterochromia iridis, a rare condition. What we're talking about is actually the reason behind Benedict's arresting blue eyes. Or are they green? As it turns out, it's both. Due to this rare condition, in which the iris in one eye has a different color than the iris of the other eye, Cumberbatch's eyes change color depending on the light. You may be aware of other artists with the same affection, such as David Bowie or fellow actor Simon Pegg. However, unlike them, Benedict's eyes always match in color, which at least makes it easier to find fitting clothes depending on the occasion. Number 4. He dyes his hair out of necessity and changes his way constantly. And that's not the only fun fact. You may not know about the actor's appearance. Although he became well known for his black curly hair, his natural shade is auburn. His trademark look was born out of necessity. He dyed his hair black to play the part of Sherlock Holmes, which made him a bona fide TV star. Although he has confessed that he doesn't think the dark, wavy hair suits him. He has had to make harder sacrifices. He lost quite a bit of weight for Sherlock and then got cast as Khan in Star Trek Into the Darkness film. The role required him to bulk up and eat close to 4,000 calories every day, after which he went on a diet yet again. That sounds very close to torture to us, so we can see why he thought tinting his hair was no big deal. Number 3. His family name is related to slavery and sounds like a breakwind. Benedict's talents as an actor seems to come partly from his family background. Both of his parents are also well-known stars in the UK. His mother, Wanda Ventim, had a very successful career in British sitcoms and sci-fi shows, while his father, Timothy Carlton, was a distinguished actor from the theater and several television series as well. However, if you're a fan of their son, you're more likely to have seen them in the show that made him a household name. That's right, Sherlock Holmes' parents in the BBC series are actually Benedict's real-life parents. The actor, born in 1976, confessed that the experience of sharing screen time with his mom and dad was nerve-wracking for him, although he later admitted that he was happy to have them there. He even got close to tears when he watched the first scene between Sherlock and his mother and father. Despite their heartwarming cameo, Benedict's parents weren't always so happy about his aspirations in life. 
They actually went out of their way to give him a normal life and discouraged him from pursuing his acting ambitions. Luckily, he was dead set on pursuing his dreams and they eventually relented. You may be also wondering why Mr. Carlton and Mrs. Ventum don't share their son's last name. The truth is, they do share it, but they never used it for their careers for a good reason. It comes from Benedict's great-great-great-grandfather, Abraham Perry Cumberbatch, who was a slave owner in Barbados. When Ben started performing, they told him not to use his last name, afraid that it would diminish his reputation. He decided to keep it, although his mom also had aesthetic reasons to reject it. She said Cumberbatch sounded fluffy and like a fart in a bath. Whatever you think of Benedict's surname, you probably agree that his mom is really skilled in the art of comparison. Number 2. He stunned at a Pink Floyd concert with his trick with the violin. Benedict's role as the most famous sleuth of all time required him to successfully mimic Sherlock's hobbies. Chief of all, he had to learn to play the violin, or at least act as if he knew how to. The show's producers hired classically trained violinist Eos Chatter, and they gave him just one week to teach Cumberbatch how to fiddle like it was second nature. According to the teacher, Benedict made a good sound after just seven days, which is pretty impressive feat. Trust us, we've tried. But Cumberbatch's extremely accurate fake violin playing is not his most notable musical skill. Besides being a great actor, he himself is admitted to having a wonderful singing voice. Pink Floyd fans were also able to verify it when he went on stage at Royal Albert Hall to give a faithful rendition of one of the band's hits. Beyond the occasional guest appearance, he has also confessed that he would love to star in a musical, which would be a great way to satisfy another dream of his, portraying the king of rock and roll himself, Elvis Presley. If the film were accurate, he would also have to gain and lose a ton of weight over the course of filming. But then again, he's already used to it. Number 1. He taught at a Tibetan monastery and survived a kidnapping attempt. Benedict's life away from the cameras has been at least as exciting as his film roles. Case in point, before he went to university, he decided to spend a year in Tibet. He could have backpacked all over Europe like most students do, but instead he taught English at a monastery in Darjeeling, India. It seems like Cumberbatch isn't afraid of new experiences, which is probably why he is also legally licensed to marry people. You heard it right, when his friends Seth Cummings and Rob Reinder got hitched, he agreed to officiate the wedding. Those anecdotes don't mean that his life has been easy all the time. When he was filming To the Ends of the Earth in Africa, he and his co-star Denise Black were kidnapped by six armed men. Given his enormous talent, it's not surprising that he argued his way out of the situation. He told the kidnappers that he had a heart condition, which might cause him a seizure and get them in trouble. It sounds like a bad excuse when we say it, but it probably sounds much better when an Oscar-winning star does. Well, that was our video with the juiciest on multifaceted multiverse traveler Doctor Strange, aka Sherlock, aka Benedict Cumberbatch. Do you feel like we maybe missed anything important? Don't be shy, show us all you got by leaving a comment below. Also, remember to click on the like and subscribe buttons to show your support for the channel. Don't forget to hit the bell icon too. If you do, you'll get a notification every time there's new content available. Thanks for watching and see you soon.